Hello guys, welcome to Learning Medicine. Today I'm going to talk about bacteria structure, especially about eubacteria. So let's start it. The outermost layer, the blue one, that is called glycocalyx. So this one is glycocalyx. Glycocalyx can be capsule or cylinder. If it is well organized, thick, and a tough structure, we call it capsule. And it is composed of polypeptide, and polysaccharide and this is the same structure which is present in capsulated bacteria and it increases the pathogenicity of those bacteria if it is thin loose and not well organized structure then we call it slime layer or s layer and it is composed of only polysaccharide i have looked to the second one that is cell wall so this one is cell wall this is the same structure on the base of that we differentiate between gram positive and gram negative bacteria during gram staining technique because in case in case of gram positive bacteria the cell wall is thick that's all because of high component of peptidoglycan and in case of gram negative bacteria the cell wall is thin that's all because of low component of peptidoglycan so the black one this is called cell membrane and remember one thing bacteria or prokaryotes don't have membrane bounded organelles like mitochondria and uh, Golgi apparatus like that so you may be thinking if they don't have mitochondria so how they gain or get ATP or energy so remember the enfolding of cell membrane these have all important or necessary enzymes which are required for electron transport chain to generate ATP. So in other words, you can call it powerhouse in case of bacteria. These are called mesosomes. So in case of bacteria, you can call it powerhouse of bacteria that are mesosomes. And have a look to these structures. The red one, these are called ribosomes which are involved for the synthesis of protein and this one is genome or genetic material of bacteria that contain a single DNA molecule or a single chromosome that determine the all property of bacteria and remember here is another DNA molecule you can also say it extra chromosomal DNA or plasmid so this is totally different from the original one so this is not involved to determine the property of bacteria so the function of this plasmid is it helps the bacteria to develop resistance against antibiotics and one more function is sometimes it involves in the process of fertility by transmitting genetic material from one bacterium to another bacterium okay let's come to the surface these small structures these are called pili so if pili can be two types if the pili are smaller then we call it fimbria the smaller pili called fimbria which help the bacterium to attach on other surfaces if the other surface can be um, the cellular surface where the bacteria is going to cause disease or other it can be other bacteria surface and the bigger pili these are called sec pili or f pillars which can help uh, during the process of conjugation for the transmission of genetic material from one bacterium to another bacterium so this this structure that is called flagellum which help the bacteria in the process of mortality so that's all about general view of bacteria structure thank you for watching